I am Zubin Mehta, music director of the New York Philharmonic and Israel Philharmonic Orchestras. I am also a Zoroastrian. Most people know us as fire worshippers. One of the world's great religions, Zoroastrianism is also one of the least known. I make music all over the world and in every biography they mention my religion. Most of the time I find myself at a loss for words explaining it. Of course, I know the usual cliches that make up the Zoroastrian trinity. Good thoughts, good words and good deeds. But more than that I don't know. And the other 120,000 like me don't know much more either. Isn't it time the world knew a little more about us? Bombay, and this is a Naujot ceremony I myself went through when I was nine years old. Just like these three children, I also had to learn a book this thick in an ancient language I didn't understand. These are my people, the Parsis of India, followers of Zoroastrianism, the oldest surviving revealed religion in the world. But after 37 years, I still don't know too much about it, so I've come back to find out if it has any sort of relevance in my life today. I was literally brought up under the Zoroastrian Trinity, our version of the Ten Commandments. You know, as a boy at home, my parents literally drummed it into me. The concept of good words, good thoughts and good deeds. Manashni, Gavashni, Kunashni. These are concepts I try to live by automatically. But I can have wisdom. I mean, I don't have to wear this, these symbols, these garments. Oh yes, you should. If you want to be a better Zoroastrian, if you want to experience the religion fully, then you should wear them. The Sutra and Kusti will be your guide and protector against the forces of evil. In them are symbolized many elements of the religion. The Sutra is white to represent the purity of thought. In front of the sutra, there's a little pocket, 
in which your good deeds are stored. The kushti is made of fine lamb's wool. It's wound three times around your waist to remind you that you produce good thoughts, good words, good deeds all the time. The kushti is tied with a reef knot in the front and a reef knot at the back. The reef knot is a perfect knot to symbolize the joining of the physical and the spiritual. You must go to the source, in our case the Garthas, the hymns of the Prophet himself. From them comes everything we believe in. He asked me to go with him on a journey to find out about my ancestral religion. It would be like traveling on wings of fire. It was an offer I could not refuse. I told the priest that I wanted to go to the town of Navsari my ancestral home, which I had never seen. Four thousand years before Christ, the Iranians and Indians belonged to the same group of people, known as the Aryans, from which the name Iran is derived. Eventually, around 3000 BC, they separated some drifting to the east, to India, and some to Iran. It was here, near the Aral Sea, where Zarathustra is believed to have been born. Survival was hard for these nomads, who perceived struggle as an essential factor of life. These Indo-Iranians regarded the many elements of nature as gods, and therefore they worshipped such things as fire and water. They made many sacrifices to these gods, in order to gain some control over their destinies. However, the terror of marauding barbarians played havoc with their lives. violent world came Zarathustra. According to legend, he was the only child who laughed when he was born instead of crying. The Garthas, comparable to the Psalms in the Judeo-Christian religions, say, those who are made to cry have seen mortality as their end, and those who have laughed have seen their own righteousness. This laughter seemed to be the first sign of a divine power watching over the child. Zarathustra. As Zarathustra grew into his late teens, the doubts about his family's religion and their traditions became so totally unacceptable that he decided to look for better answers elsewhere. The radical step of leaving family and home naturally was an emotional upheaval and perhaps even frightening. But the young man knew that it was necessary. And so painfully, and with the reluctant blessings of his family, he left in his search for truth. For ten years, Zarathustra renounced the world he knew. 
he was determined to pursue his ever-deepening hunger for Asha, the truth. He traveled over the years in this solitary quest, and as legend has it, he didn't find his answers. Just as it was for the many prophets who came after him, Zarathustra was confronted with many temptations. It was his unique strength and determination that enabled him to stay on his course. Finally, Ariman, Satan himself, appeared, totally frustrated, and Zarathustra exploded in a fit of anger. the Spitamas and of the Aryans. I am called Zarathustra. I bring the law of God and the knowledge of his laws. I bring the true worship and devotion of God. I come to announce the judgment of God and to issue warning of the day of God's judgment and man's final resurrection. I am the prophet of God guardian of his creation. My God is Agura Mazda, the Lord of Wisdom. In the following ten more years of his traveling the land, he succeeded in gaining just one follower, just one person who could accept his revelations, his cousin, Media Manga. Where can I go? To what land can I flee? I am excluded from my family and my friends. I am powerless. I have no followers. The wicked are still admired by all for their wealth and power. How can I please you, O oh Lord? Tell me, Master. Tell me you will give me the support which a friend should give to a friend. Like Confucius after him, Zarathustra searched his country for a king who would accept his teachings, a patron who would support him. Until finally, in the twelfth year of his quest, the most important event in the history of Zoroastrianism took place. I've asked you here since you are said to be the wisest of the followers of our religion. I hope you'll prove to be so. I wish you to question this priest for me, to test the strength of the message he says he brings us. Ask him any questions you like. You say that you are a priest. Is that of your religion or ours? I was chosen from your religion by Ahura Mazda, the Lord of Wisdom, to waken men from the darkness in which they have been slumbering. You dare say our established religion is one of darkness? It is, because any religion that worships evil gods as much as good ones is blind to the bright light of truth. We only worship the gods of evil to appease them. How else can their harmful influence be kept away from us? How else can evil be controlled? You cannot control it if you do not understand the true nature of this world. There are two spirits in it, one of good and one of evil. So, there are two gods now. 
I thought there was only one. There is only one God, Ahura Mazda, the Lord of Wisdom. And did he create this world on his own? Yes, he created everything. So he created evil too, this good and righteous God you ask us to worship? He did not. I did not say... Clearly he did. If he created everything, then he must have created evil too. What a cruel, unthinking tyrant this God of his must be. He is not cruel or unthinking. I will not have my God spoken of in such a way. Then explain to me. Convince me why they are wrong. I need a lighted torch and a goblet. Get them for him. The goblet makes a shadow on the table. The shadow is like evil. It has no source. It is entirely negative. But surely the source of the shadow is the light. How can it be? It is its opposite. But the shadow cannot exist without the light. It is entirely dependent on it. This is mere wordplay. I don't think so. Go on. If you look, you will see the shadow seems attached to the goblet, an inseparable part of it, just as evil often seems to have a vice-like grip on all our lives. So how do we loosen that grip? You can't be parted from your own shadow. You can if you choose to follow the good path, which leads us always closer to the light, which is God's wisdom. You see, the shadow now becomes separated from the cup. It has lost its hold on it. And as we move still closer to God, the shadow becomes even weaker and more powerless, until at last we are able to see it for what it is, a mere illusion, and itself lacking the strength to attack us. If all mankind chose to further the truth, then evil, like darkness, would be vanquished. Indeed, when we reach that stage, evil will finally be defeated in the world, and death and destruction will be no more. Death is not evil. Death is a part of life itself. We have always believed that, yes. If we gave him long enough, he would convince us black was right. Of course, death is not evil. Then if you were to die now, this instant, would you regard it as an act of goodness, the act of a kind and loving God? Go on. Answer him. It is a foolish question. It is not. Death in our world is inevitable, for without it, divine justice could not take place. Death is the separation of the physical body from its spiritual counterparts, the soul and the spirit. Clearly, that which destroys life is evil. One thing I notice. There's no talk of punishment. Are you not afraid of your God? Why should I be? He is my friend. More like a father to me. My lord, I can put up with this no longer. This is no religion. This is no god at all. Why do you say that? Because one can do whatever one likes in this faith. What if we were to lead wicked lives? One will be punished in the hereafter. <laughs> After death, all our souls will be judged at the bridge of the separator, which for the virtuous is as wide as any road. But for the wrongdoer, is as narrow as the blade of the sharpest sword. Those who have done more bad than good will fall into the abode of gloom and darkness below. While those who have done more good than bad will rise up to the abode of joy and light. And so we're encouraged to lead good lives. We are. Call your master. I find much that is beautiful and wise in your religion. Then I beg you to be true to your heart and accept the message of Ahura Mazda. No, my lord. You cannot. Cannot. You dare to tell me what I can and cannot do? My lord, if you accept this religion, it is not you alone who will accept it, but your people who will have to accept it too. He's right. This is not just a personal decision. I must have time to think. I shall need to talk further with you. Whenever you wish it. It was ordained that King Vishtaspa would be the person who would deliver Mazda's message to mankind. However, some of the court advisors felt their own positions threatened, and so they plotted to discredit Zarathus. You see, my lord, who discovered all this? The man who cleans the house. As I've report, he's not a prophet. There's a sorcerer who wants your power and control. He's a wizard. 
who wants to rule the country in your place. What have you to say to these accusations? I do not know how these things came to be here. They're not mine, my lord. But they were found in your rooms. How can you say they're not yours? I did not put them there. You must believe me. He is not to be trusted, my lord. He only wants your wealth and power. He should be killed. I'll decide what happens to him. I give you this one last chance. Tell me the purpose of these objects. Are they for some ritual in your religion which you haven't told me of? They're not mine. I can only think they've been put here to discredit me in your eyes. Perhaps people are jealous of our friendship. Then they need no longer be. That friendship is now at an end. Deal with him, Jamaspa. I ask you, tell me truly, O oh Lord, who is truthful, who deceitful? Is this one evil or that one evil? How can I deliver deceit into the hands of truth in order to transform it in accordance with your teaching? How shall I make my voice powerful enough to lead mortal men to your eternal truth? Overwhelmed with anxieties concerning Zarathustra, the king spent long periods riding his beloved horse, Aspasia. Some days later, for no apparent reason, the king's horse became very ill. The monarch loved this animal, who no doubt became a symbol of adventure, a source of loyalty. The Queen and the Prime Minister, Jamaspa, stood by, unable to console the King in his misery. He's doing all he can. And it's not enough. There's no point in upsetting yourself, my lord. There's every point in upsetting myself. The best horse I ever owned is dying, and I'm sent a healer who is at death's door himself. The only doubt in my mind is who will expire first, the healer or the horse. I was told he's the most killed one we have, my lord. Perhaps he was, many years ago, before any of us were born. Bring him here. Get up, get up. Well. Well, can you not tell us what is wrong with him? He's very ill. Very, very ill. Out! Out! We must be patient. Bring me another healer. Bring me three. Say he will not last the night. They tried every remedy? Every one known to man. And a few new ones besides. Finish the food. <laughs> Tell the king I can cure his horse. You? Yes. However, I know you will not kill him. What good would that do? Besides, I have a special cure. They have tried every cure. Not with the power of my god. You know. Do as I say. Tell him. I can well believe that he will cure him. Well, I can't. But it will only be further proof that he's a sorcerer. If he can't get out of prison, how can he cure a dying horse? Isn't it worth trying? Maybe. My lord. If I cure him, it won't be with sorcerer's magic, but through prayer.